How are we'll you? get started in just a minute. How are you both? Sure. I'm good. To you? Okay. Uh, Fabio uh, is trying to join us. Uh, I think he has to click on the share audio and camera. I, Fabio, can some you... problems. Yeah. He's in our, in the chat room, but he's not here with us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are you hearing me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. I had some no trouble. No worries. You're perfectly on time. We're just about to get started. Okay. Sorry. No worries. Hey, everyone. My name's Mark Boyd. I'll be your moder moderator for this session. I use the pronouns he and him. Um, and with me, we've got Natalia, Raphael, and Fabio from Sincedia to talk about open finance. Yes, I'm from Sincia, yeah. Mark. Fantastic. Um, Natalia, I think we'll get started with you. Do you want to describe a little bit about your role, but also introduce us to the subject of open finance? Sure, sure. Uh, thank you, Mark. So, hello, everyone. I'm Natalia. I'm an open finance specialist at Sincidia, and I'm responsible for some open banking and open finance projects here. And I help my customers to go through this journey. And I'm with them and testing and making sure that everything is okay. So I'm thrilled to be here, Mark. Thank you. Set, up, set this up on the right path. What, what, is, what do you see as open finance? Oh, okay. So I think for us to define open finance, we should start uh, talking about open banking. Uh, this movement allows individuals to share their banking information with third parties through APIs. So this means that people will have a safe channel to share their data as long as they give their consent. Um, people will also have more control of their data, of their information. Um, this initiative uh, brings some uh, benefits for users and for companies as well. So. Benefits for users, we can say that they will have new products and services offers uh, with lower costs and better discounts. So I think everybody will profit from this. And there are some benefits for companies as well, such as uh, companies will be able to have a 360 degrees view of their clients and access to their banking history, also the user behavior. So they will be able to design offers tailor-made for these customers, you know. They will improve their portfolio and they'll, they'll have um, an increase of market share as well. So we can say that open finance is an extension of this initiative uh, since not only banks will be able to share data, uh, new industries, industries, sorry, will benefit from this, such as insurance and investment companies as well. So, uh, in Brazil, uh, we see that open insurance is already being uh, designed, and we are already uh, seeing uh, what products and services will be shared with those customers. And the consent uh, requirement is also something that it will matter a lot for this initiative um so open banking oh sorry no yeah okay we have some opportunities here as well so research shows that over 5 million brazilians will benefit from open banking uh for the next 12 months and over 800 new fintechs will be created as well so i think it's going to be a very good uh, opportunity for everybody now introduce Fabio. Fabio, could you tell us a little bit about your role? Thanks, and, and building on what Natalia has um, uh, outlined for us as the introduction. What, where does, why now with open finance? How should startups who are um, maybe not even part of the financial services industry, how should they be thinking about open finance and where to connect with it? And for those who are in the insurance and in some of those other fields that Natalia has described, what's their first step on, in getting involved in open finance? Yes, thank you, Mark. Thank you, Natalia, Rafael. Thank you, people. Good afternoon. I'm Fabio Gonzalez. 
I'm a director from Syncia. Uh, I'm in charge of um, developing new business, developing new services, and I'm also the founder of the FinTech Lab, where a portal where we share uh, information on our FinTech ecosystem here in Brazil. Uh, let's try to, to explore uh, more open finance in, the, in uh, building on what Natalia said and what the question you have. Uh, I, I think uh, I think we need we need open finance. We need open banking. I think uh, we need to provide more and better financial services to our customers. I think uh, this is why we need open banking and open finance. Uh, I think we have uh, through that an opportunity to include unbanked people, unbanked ones, giving them access to investment, to credit, consumption, financial education, insurance, and other benefits on financial services inclusion. But we also has uh, the opportunity. We also have the opportunity to reduce the overall cost of the ecosystem, of financial ecosystem, uh, reduce the, the complexity of our transactions and processes. And uh, there is an, another point that uh, I, I should mention here, maybe to include uh, also a creative and good and creative business idea from the fintechs and from the entrepreneurs. I think open banking will allow that um and also push the incumbents the traditional banks to be more efficient and to to deliver better services to us i think uh, this is uh, why here in brazil we see open banking making a huge sense for our markets it's like a question of efficiency also not only a servicing good uh, uh, better our customers but also uh giving efficiency to the systems. So uh, I think, uh, I believe open finance uh, is, is about uh, people and business and data uh, at the end. Uh, of, of course, uh, of course, regulation and technology play fundamental roles here. I think uh, API technology give us connection, give us control, and regulation makes this game more fair. It's important to have regulators on, on the game here. So I think uh, this is why open banking makes sense for us and, and to open finance mainly. So we including all those uh, services here and uh, giving us uh, a sense of going beyond banking uh, through finance and, and being best for our clients, customers. Interesting. Rafael, your working around the implementations of open banking and open finance with customers aren't you what's the um uh, can you tell us about that journey how do you work with a customer around implementing the open finance opportunities that fabio and natalia have described well first hello to to all well um well introducing myself my I am uh, head of solutions here in Brazil and responsible for an entire team of solutions architect that is on a day by day discussion how to implement technologies and solutions, the open bank and open finance, open insurance stuff. Uh, well, uh, the, the first the first thing that we need to 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 understand when uh, we need to to implement an, an, an open finance uh, uh, platform or solutions is uh, is thinking about the layers, how to position the things on the right, the, in the right way, on the right blocks. For example, if, if you think uh, uh, as, uh, the, the, the fundamental layers, we have a, a layer of the, cons uh, as we said, uh, could, as we can, uh, we can describe as a consumer layer, where is the 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 cons, uh, the, the retailer, the uh, the payment initiators, and I mean uh, everyone? We want you to in the ecosystem. We want you to consume data and services is on the consumer layer, 
On the other hand, we have the provider layer that is where the banking, insurance company, and other kind of open, open uh, or finance uh, provider will still live on. Um, and we have a, a third, uh, a third um, layer that we could describe as the, the, the regulatory layer. This is where all the, the central bank or regulatory center and things like that that are put on. Well, um, so that we need to think a uh, 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 fundamental open finance layer to interact with the consumer layer, the uh, provider layer, you know, so in the regulatory layer uh, too. Uh, this uh, open, it is open finance uh, layer. We we need to to uh, to understand how is the main capabilities of this open this open finance uh, layer. The, the the main thing, the main capability uh, should be, of course, open APIs, because the APIs will enable the integration with the cons uh, consumer layers, and also the layer where besides everything about the regulatory stuffs. Um, this, 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 this capability of the open API, we, we need to think this open API should address the regulatory sentences, but also we needed to, to, to think beyond the regulatory because uh, uh, the capability to expose the service and data uh, uh, through open APIs uh, should, of course, to address regulator, regulatory issues, but also provide the, the new products, new services uh, uh, through the APIs. So this is the, the, the first one. The, the second one uh, uh, capability of this open, um, open finance layer is related to the security, you know, because, uh, of course, if you, are, if you want to expose data and services, we need to think about the security and, and other kind of mechanism that we need to add is here. Um, also, uh, uh, we, we need the third, the third one capability, I would say, should be authorization and consent services. Uh, because once we are, uh, when we are talking about the data, especially about customer data, and uh, also about the, 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 the services, uh, the, the, the end users and the people must to authorize and consent the use of the data and the, the, uh, also um, allow and consent about transactions that to, uh, they are doing here. Um, the fourth one I should, uh, uh, we need to, to, to think the capabilities related to connection, the integration with the backend systems because uh, we are creating this open uh, financial layer to expose it to the outside uh, environments. So we need to integrate to the car banking services, car insurance services, and services like, like uh, 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 well, services where, uh, where the, the, the data is stored and the services reside on. Uh, and the fifth one, I should say that um, we need to think uh, the, the integration part with the regulatory centers and the regulatory layer. Uh, these capabilities uh, should be able to uh, expose data related to the performance, related to the consumption consumptions of the, the, the integrations and the APIs and things like that. So these this, this, this fi this five uh, kind of capabilities should be added when you think to implement this open finance layer. Uh, an another thing we need to, 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 uh, to think it's about uh, this kind of solution that we need to implement should be a, a kind of platform. What, uh, no matter if you, you are hiring some uh, solution provider or you are creating, for, creating it from scratch, for example, but the platform think it's, it's uh, too much important because um, uh, we need to we need to address the regulatory, but as I said, we have a lot of opportunity that we're discussing here. That the, this platform should be able, for example, to collect the data from the third parties, and store the, this data, 
and uh, yeah, should be able to create some kind of uh, 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 apply some kind of intelligence and things like that uh, in order to expose this intelligence and expose these business rules to the to the to other parties. Uh, so I, sh I should say that it's the most important part of all is the platform thing. Of course, that's the platform thinking, uh, providing all those capabilities that I mentioned here. Fascinating. That's um, fairly. Uh, that's really comprehensive, and I like how it ties in the platform thinking reinforces uh, some of those points that Fabio and Natalia were making around, uh, you know, working with external partners to build those new services and make that all possible. When you talked about open APIs in the, the new Brazil regulation, for example, they are they are bringing in an open banking. API standard or it's already been brought in. So all banks have to conform to that standard. I know with the open insurance in Brazil, it's a little bit slower on getting the, you know, those standards. And Mexico's got that same issue where they're trying to push forward on the fintech regulation, but the there isn't the API standards but being defined in the same way that we saw that it was done in the UK. Europe decided they weren't going to do it that way. That, but if there is open API standards, that can really facilitate growth as far as it's easier to connect with new finances because everyone's working and, you know, building with the same language, if you like, and building the same APIs. When you're an API provider in open banking and open finance, how much should you be trying to fit with the API standard and then but also you can't let that hold you back if there isn't an API standard. So how do you make that decision about following um, industry standards? But if there aren't any there, going, do you go it alone or do you hold back and wait for the standard? What, what, how, does, how do um, API providers start becoming that platform component and where, where, when do they make those sorts of decisions? Yeah, sure, uh, yes. Uh, we as a, 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 a company that provide an entire solutions uh, in terms of open finance, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's important to, to say, as you said, uh, everything about the, the, the standards, we need to be updated. I mean, for example, um, uh, in the regulatory here in Brazil, we have a lot of security standards like uh, CIBA and FA API, Open ID Connect, and things like that. So uh, we need to 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 think that we we are constantly need to be updated to these standards because uh, in in every in every every initiative of open finance, uh, you know, I mean, for example, an open insurance is not regula regulated yet, as you mentioned, but uh, uh, of course they will follow some of the, the 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 industrial grade. Uh, uh, um, uh, standards, you know, and uh, so uh, I, I I believe that we we need to we we need to consider to uh, to, to follow all those standards, the main standards that the industries are are, are falling on, and of course be aware to 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 update when it needed. You know, okay? And uh, also, as a platform thinking, uh, it's uh, it's important to to your platform should be uh, uh, able to extend uh, and be able to to easily put new kind of patterns inside of your platform. This is a kind of a platform thinking that uh, extensibility. It's um it's an important part a part of of this all because as I said before. Uh, uh, this uh, we can you can extend and create um, or uh, you create the, the behavior that you you need to fit uh, because because your platform allows this kind of uh, this kind of extensibility. Thanks. The um, so uh, building on what you were saying about platform thinking, there Natalia was talking about a five million. A uh, potential customer opportunity. Fabio was also talking about how um, the unbanked or those who haven't been supported by the existing banking systems as well. How do how if there's 
a bank or for, oh, let's talk maybe beyond banks, let's talk finance and insurance companies. If they're thinking about how to partner and come from this platform thinking mindset, how do you decide those early use cases that you might start building with for some of those 5 million to be able to create those? I think, Natalia, you said a, a potential 80,000 new fintech um, s startups working. How do they? How do those eighty thousand startups choose a use case and a target segment um, to go after? Yeah. So we have an interesting case that we can share with you. Um, there is a bank here in Brazil called Bank Topazio, Topazio Bank. Uh, they have an offer of bank as a service, and they have they partner with uh, Mercado Livre, Mercado Pago. Uh, so they can offer credit for their merchants. So uh, it's an interesting thing that you can uh, create new partnerships and uh, being able to uh, partner with other fintechs. So different kind of, kinds of services can be offered to those clients. So uh, marketplace strategies, uh, uh, new offers uh, with this kind of model can uh, increase the number of fintechs. And uh, like Fabio said, the competition between those companies will increase and uh, customers will ask for more new kinds of products, new products, new offers. So I think there will be an opportunity for all different kinds of industries here. That's fantastic. Um, Fabio, do you want to weigh in? What that makes me think of is like so Mercado Libre, Libre that's fantastic that you know they they've got this huge merchant base that's all on the platform that's um offering their ser services as retailers so there's that they you're saying that then through the bank they're getting access to credit because a lot of those merchants are like what they call thin file uh, aren't they like they run they don't have a long credit history that the banks can look at in order to be able to offer them that credit. Whereas open banking then can use a whole range of data points to be able to show the sales volume and therefore that they can start making credit. What about then, but then you can flow on and they would then be able to offer their customers buy now, pay later type credit services and so on. Is that is that how fabio is that how you see some of those open finance and then if it's a large purchase you would get your insurance at that point as well so do you see is that how you're seeing it play out you got to unmute sorry about it um here in brazil Mark, uh, we have a, a very complex and sophisticated financial service. Uh, we have uh, to to see to have some figures for you. We have uh, around three thousand financial institutions and fintechs. In terms of fintechs, we have around uh, now eight hundred fintechs uh, in, in any in any segment of these financial industries. And to to service them, we have a, around 500 tech companies uh, to to give uh, platforms to them to to financial institutions, and to service also our population. We have a 150 150 million people and uh, and five 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 or six uh, million. Uh, enterprises to services so the the opportunities for connection and for for example one fintech uh, we can observe that in brazil for one fintech to focus on segment and to service this specific segment and to have uh, some partnership or cooperation with other companies, fintechs are not fintechs are incumbents and so on in order to aggregate in the offer uh, value to to final customers, so we have uh, we can have here a win-win situation, and this is the 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 base or should be the base uh, for the benefit for the value that we will deliver through um, open banking here in Brazil. Uh, so uh, this this is again a, a, an opportunity that we have to compound. Uh, and to build uh, offerings that are unique, that are 
possible to serve C1 niche or one specific segment and and so on. So when you when you meet C, uh, some very regular and uh, very regular offer in a bank that uh, a current account and payment and you can aggregate insurance for another company or um, uh, financial education or financial platform management platform uh, for a fintech and you, you can build uh, a, a huge solution so we we are seeing a huge uh, a huge movement here in brazil in order to to see uh, who is going to serve the um, uh, adjacent products and offers to 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 companies so companies are looking everywhere looking for the best opportunity they have uh, to to make a better offer yeah well, thanks so much um our time's out already it, it was a, a fast moving session i think we covered a lot of ground um thank you all so much for being anyone in the audience who wants to follow up Raphael's put his email address so you can find out more about the um for those implementation questions but thanks Natalia thanks Fabio thanks uh, Raphael for a great conversation thank, thank you, you thank you Raphael thank you Natalia thank you, thank you.